All right, so we're in our water bay again today. So last time we had put in the toilet flange and um, we kind of realized and people had asked, oh, you know, could you do an overview on your tanks? And so we'd ordered them so, so long ago, so we got them about a year ago now, um, that we just kind of overlooked that. So anyway, today we're gonna be doing a small overview on our tanks and how we decided on these tanks and where we found them and what we paid and what customizations we made to make them fit in here as well as make them fit with our plumbing um, plan. So anyway, um, we ordered these through PlasticWaterTanks.com. Um, they have an assortment of tanks in all kinds of sizes. Um, so what we started with is we completely emptied out this bay. So we decided that this bay would be our water bay and it would have to hold our tanks as well as water filters, a pressure regulator, and even the water heater. We want the water heater in here. We don't want it inside the actual uh, coach. So that was one of the considerations because we could have gotten bigger tanks that took up more of the space, but then we wouldn't have any room for all of the pumps and heaters and all of that other stuff. So this was the tank that we decided on. We actually found it on a different website. Um, it's made by a company called Custom Roto, and they're actually marine tanks and um, they're 163 gallons. So the measurements are, they're 65 inches um, long ways, uh, 19 and a quarter inches high, and 30 and a half inches wide. And so the reason we thought that would fit really well is they fit in this space with just enough room so that there's some wiggle room where we can still move them a little bit, but we can secure them with um, just like two by sixes like we've already started to do here. So we can use the bay itself to hold the tanks from going back and forth and then we've secured them going side to side with these, uh, these aluminum uh, rails. So they've worked out really nice. Um, we paid about $1,850 I believe when it was all said and done. So we looked this morning because we were curious and these tanks are now, um, I believe they're a thousand, like a thousand and sixty seven dollars or something. So they would cost a lot more if we had to order them today. Um, we got a deal on them because we ordered two and the lady was really nice. So she's like, she gave us a discount on them. So we actually ended up paying 1800 and that included I think it was like almost $300 in shipping. They do weigh up about 100 pounds each. So um, we customized them in that we were able to put the ports exactly where we wanted. So we were able to put the fittings exactly what size fitting, um, where we wanted them. And so they have a little form that you fill out and we'll put a picture of that so it's a little clearer than the one I have in my hand. Um, but they put a little form in and then you fill it out and tell them where you want each, each hole and how big you want it to be. So when we were planning this out, the first thing we did is Michelle and I sat down and we decided on a configuration for the bathroom. And that was what led to this whole toilet flange thing. And so once we decided where the toilet was, then we knew we wanted a straight down shot for the toilet and everything else was kind of um, less important than that one. So in our, in our rig, we have the toilet, we have a shower, um, and this is for drains. We have a toilet, a shower, and we're gonna have a washer dryer, a sink, a kitchen sink, and then the third consideration was that there's a vent. So here, um, <clears throat> there's a hole right here up in the bay that um, that goes all the way up through and then exits out the roof and that's our vent pipe and so um, that was also a consideration the nice thing is the vent pipe can double as a drain as long as there isn't a p-trap on this side of the the configuration so the p-traps are all going to have to be near the place where they're servicing which is absolutely fine so um, for the 
storage tank or the black water tank it's it's a black and a gray water tank it's both um, we didn't go with a gray water and a separate black water we just we're gonna combine them all in both um, a because it's it's a little more simple to do it that way it's a little easier to get the tanks in here and stuff like that and B um, we didn't see any significant advantage to having a gray and black if there is one comment down below we couldn't really find one other than you could flush your uh, black water tank and then use the gray water to flush the the sewer hose through um, but we have a different thing for that we actually have a, a, a another little fitting in the back that we've put on there to be able to wash the tanks through so we'll be able to rinse them and, and wash the tank through um, so on the wastewater tank there are five fittings so we have um, five fittings that we told them exactly where to put them um, so we have two three inch fittings one is for the valve the gate valve that is the 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 valve that um, that you basically you know you pull the thing and, and it dumps the water the other three inch valve is for the toilet and then we have two one and a half inch uh, fittings. Uh, this one here is for the shower and it will go that way and this one here will be for the bathroom sink, the kitchen sink, and the laundry. So the and oh and this one is also the vent. So and the vent. Um, then there's one way in the back that you can see way back there. That one is a flush out. So what we thought was we'll hook um, a, a connection and we'll be able to, to run water in so that it pushes from the back of the tank forward. I mean, that, that was the theory. I'm not sure how that's gonna work out, but that was what we were thinking. There's also um, these little flush out things that you can drill into the tank. Um, our last tank had that where you connect you just kind of screw the hose into there and then it it has a series of jets that fire in every direction um, we're not sure if we're gonna add that yet um, probably not we probably don't want to cut into our tanks so our freshwater tank though is the exact same tank just with different fittings so these tanks are basically exactly the same so in this one we also had five fittings so there's three right up front here so there are two for fills, uh, one we thought would be used for city water, one we thought would be used as a gravity, as a, as a gravity fill, and then the third one there is a little bit smaller, it's only a half inch diameter. We thought that one might be used as a vent. So there's those three there, and then in the back, we'll go around the back here in a minute, there are two um, at, at the very bottom. That, we're, that we use to kind of extract the water. So to be the water supply line, as well as um, maybe a um, like a drain on the other side. We could always tee off and just drain off the other one, but um, we've put two back there. So we'll go back there and take a look. All right, so here we are in the back of the tank. So this is the other side of the uh, of the bus. This is the passenger side. So here's the uh, the little fill valve I was talking about is right here, or the flush out valve is right here. Um, that's the one that we're using the to maybe push like flush things so that they go out the drain side on that side. Um, over here is our this is our freshwater tank, and like I said, they're exactly the same tank just with different fittings. So the three fittings are up there for the fills and the vent, and then there's two down here that work as the uh, supply that work as the supply uh, fittings so our pump would be attached over here so what I wanted to show though is that back here we have a lot more space um, we've left a lot more space so that we can fit a water heater in here and pumps and filters and whatever we need to put back here um, there's plenty of room in here to fit that kind of stuff so we didn't we wanted as big a tank as we could get um, but you know we also wanted to put our other water stuff in here so that most of the water stuff would be in in this bay um, the other consideration we've kind of had is um, we've saw some questions about maybe tilting these tanks so tilting up so that it helps to drain the tank um, we've considered it the problem is these hold so much water at 163 gallons um, when you calculate that out it ends up being about 1400 pounds and so we don't just want to stick like a piece of 
plywood just in the back, or I'm sorry, like a two by six or something in the back, and then you're gonna have the tank sagging, or there's gonna be pressure in the middle of the tank. We wanna support the entire tank. So we're gonna, we're gonna try it like this first to see if it, you know, if it becomes an issue, then we'll, we'll address it and there's things we can do then. We can build a little framework underneath it or something like that. The other thing we wanted to mention is that these tanks, um, we originally found them on Custom Roto's website and they were significantly cheaper than these. They were like half the price that we were charged for these. And so when we asked PlasticWaterTanks.com, we said, you know, why, why is that? Why are they so much cheaper? And they said the actual material that they use to build them, um, the tanks that we were looking at were like, they were considered a light duty material, which is I think 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. And the material that they built these out of is 3 eighths of an inch. And they said what that'll do is it's a lot, it's a lot more durable of a material. It's, a, it'll, you know, they'll last a lot longer. This, these tanks are big enough that it needs to be the larger material. So anyway, so we, that's, that was the, uh, the spiel that she gave us and I mean, we bought it, we're not tank experts, so anyway. All right, so one last thing about the tanks is they are, um, like I said, they're a marine tank intended for water use. So they are FDA approved um, for water, holding water and all that stuff. Um, they are, like a white, they're not clear, they're like a white, so you should be able to see the liquid inside. But we probably will be installing um, monitors, like you may have noticed that there's no, you know, in most RV tanks there's, a, there's like three or four holes for those little monitors that tell you what the water level is. Um, we've seen so many complaints about those online that we're not gonna be using those. So what we're using is this, um, it's called the sea level and it, it uses an actual, um, the sensor is actually outside of the tank. And so it uses um, this electro, like it basically uses electricity to determine where the water level is from the outside. So there's no, um, chance of them getting gummed up or gunked up because what ends up happening is especially in the black water tank uh, like a piece of toilet paper or something else like gets lodged up in that sensor and then it no longer works so it always looks like the tank is full or it always looks like the tank is empty so um we wanted to avoid all that so we found that sea level sensor and everyone we've seen that reviewed those had nothing but good things to say so we're gonna try those. That's the ones that we're gonna we're gonna go with. And they also they're also much more accurate. It isn't just a like a one third, two thirds, empty or full. It's basically um, like a percentage of like how high it is. So you know you'll be down. And it'll be like twenty seven percent or thirty percent. It it isn't just a, a one third, two thirds or whatever. It's 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 much more fine grained. So um, we're probably gonna install those. Um, we'll probably order those soon and uh, fit them in somewhere. That's an overview of our tanks. Um, so if you guys have any questions, let us know.